This is your hour. This is your time. Help us, God, to see, to know, to understand, and to do what you have us to do. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And the church said, Amen. Amen. You be seated. I was in the hospital one day, and there was this guy. I was, I was in there visiting somebody else, and there was a guy, because the place was kind of open, and there was a guy covered with bandages from head to toe. And uh, <laughs> I looked at him and said, what do you do for a living? He said, well, I'm a former window washer. I said, when'd you give it up? He said, halfway down. <laughs> 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 I decided that worked for me. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. This one I'll speak to you for just a few minutes, so I want you to look at this. This is very important. Uh, I think this might be one of your, one of, one of, some of y'all might be one of the most important things you've heard this year. God never wastes our pain. Look at somebody and tell them that. God's not going to waste your pain. Tell them. God's not going to waste your pain. Amen? So now, now let's, just, let's just talk a little bit. It's okay just to talk a little bit. Again, God never wastes our pain. I, I, I thought about pain like I was sitting there getting ready to preach on Friday night, and then Brother Polly starts talking about this lady that come in and, 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 and the pain that she had been through. And, and also, during the week, I heard other people talk about the pain they had been through and the things they were going through. One thing I realized is, of course, and everybody would say this, Pain is unwanted. How many wants pain? How many go, praise God, here's pain again. Pain is unwanted, but also pain is unavoidable. You cannot live this life without pain. You go through pain and look at somebody and say, they got it made. But you know what? They have pain too. There's not a person on this earth that's not going to at one time or another have some unwanted pain. Unavoidable pain. But not only is it unwanted, unavoidable, pain is common. It's common to man. Everybody, on, everybody in this congregation right now, if you're not already in an uh, experience of pain, you're going to be coming into an experience of pain, or maybe you've just come out of an experience of pain, but everybody in this place, pain is a common denominator. Not only is it common, it's continual. There will never be a time until you get to the other side when the pain's going to stop. We'll sit back and we'll look and say, well, you know, I wish pain, I wish my pain would just go away. It's not. I wish I could sit here and tell you if you serve God and love Him, that everything's going to be fine. It's not going to be any more pain. I would be lying to you. Pain is, a, is, is common to all of us. It is continual. But there's one thing pain does that nothing else has the power to do. Pain has a way to change us and mold us in a way that nothing else can. Joy has a way of molding us and just everyday life has a way of molding us. But when pain comes, that's why God allows us to just have even normal pain. Because what it does is it helps us to realign our thinking and it helps us to realign ourselves. Because you know what? If I put my hand on a hot stove. Tomorrow, I guarantee you when I go back to that stove, I'm going to look and make sure it's turned off before I put my hand on it. <laughs> Amen? It'd be a silly man. It's like I was in the hospital, and there was a guy sitting next to me, and he had two great old big bandages on both sides of his face. His ears in his face. I said, what happened to you, sir? If you don't mind me asking, he said, well, I was home. My wife was always talking about how hard housework was. And I was trying to tell her that it was easy. And so I told her, I said, I'll take care of housework today. You just go shopping. I'll show you how easy it is. And I'm going to multitask. So he puts the ironing board up, up in front of him. He's watching the ESPN. He's got the ironing board up in front of him. He's reading the paper. And just to save things, he puts his telephone up on the ironing board. So he's ironing and reading the paper and watching the ESPN. And, he, and he, I said, well, what happened to your ears? He said, well, you know, there I was ironing, and I was doing all this stuff, and he said, said a guy called me on the phone, and he said, he said I, I, I picked up the phone to say something to him. When I did, I didn't pick up the phone. He said, I picked up the iron, and I stuck it right in my head. And I said, wow, that had to hurt. He said, that really hurt really bad. I said, well, that explains one side of what happened to the other side. He said, that idiot called back. <laughs> <laughs> Who was the idiot? <laughs> Amen. So pain teaches us like nothing else can. And here's what I want you to know. Pain also, pain, watch this now. Pain is never unnoticed. You know, the more, the older you get 
And the more experience you get, uh, and sense if you get to the Spirit, and sense if you get to other people, and can you just walk up with people sometimes and notice there's something wrong with them? Can you just get up on and look at something's wrong, your countenance is different today, something's changed today, something's not quite right today, and so, so because of that, you, you're sensitive to it because, number one, you have been through pain yourself. And so you see that and you begin to hone in on pain and you can become a healer because you hone in on this pain. So, so, so pain is never unnoticed. First, pain is never unnoticed by God. He's watching. He's got you. He's got everything going on. He's paying attention to everything that's happening in your life. Every minute detail, God is watching. So it's never unnoticed. It never goes unnoticed by God. Nor does it go unnoticed by man. So how is it that, 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 that people notice our pain? Well, God designed pain to produce scars. Amen? God designed your pain to produce scars. Some of us in here right now, if I say, show me some of your physical scars, you know, I can show you my knee. I can show you, you know, my knee where I uh, fell in, in Oriental uh, and on some seashells, a whole bunch of seashells, and cut my knee and they had to reconstruct it. Or I can show you this knee where they tried to do surgery to fix this. Or I can show you my shoulder where my arm was paralyzed when I got the motorcycle locked and all kinds of stuff. We got to talk about it. We can see that scar, and every scar tells a story. But I can look at scars on my hand or look at scars somewhere, and it always reminds me of what happened. There's physical scars. There's also emotional scars. All you gotta do is hear a certain song, even somebody just mention a certain person. You've been sitting there going along fine, and all of a sudden somebody mentions a certain person, and all of a sudden you tear up, or you get angry, or you feel fear. It's because all of us have scars, whether it be on the outside, or whether it be on the inside, God designed pain to produce scars. Now remember what I said before, God never wastes your pain. And so if God never wastes your pain, then why is it that he allows pain to produce scars? I'm glad you asked that question. If he, in his infinite wisdom and understanding, never allows pain to be wasted in your life, then, then what is going on? You see, well, think about this supreme example. Do you know in heaven, the only thing man made in heaven are the scars in the hands and the side and the feet of Jesus. That's the only scars man made in heaven. When you get to heaven, you'll know Jesus. Not only because you're just going to know him because he's awesome, but you're going to see the scars in his hands and in his feet and in his side. The, the amazing thing to me is these scars were placed there by man, for man. Wow. Kind of a catch-22, isn't it? Scars are placed there by man, for man. I want you to just listen to all these things that's going on right now and think about what I'm talking about. You see, you see, God allowed this to happen to Jesus. Matter of fact, he didn't just allow this to happen. He ordered this because he knew it was the only way to fulfill the plan of salvation. And just to let you know that it wasn't something he just come up with, you can go back and start looking and you'll see all the way back do you see the lambs and sacrifices of the lambs and the turtle doves and, and the sacrifices of the oxen and the sacrifices of the bulls and the cows. All the stuff you see sacrificed along the way and all the stuff in the temple was a picture of what was going to happen to Jesus. And the scars are there to remind us of what he did. So let's just let's just let's just let's talk about Jesus for a minute. Then we're going to talk about ourselves. So now, now, now Jesus, according to what we just read, it, you know, it only been a few days. The first time. It only been a few days since the devastating events. Here's Jesus, the Son of God. They're expecting him to set up a kingdom. They're expecting him to rule on this earth. James and John have already asked him, can we sit on your right hand? On your left hand, one version says, one, one gospel says, the mom asked me, my boy, sit on your right hand and your left hand. Peter already stood up and said, I will die for you and I will stand up for you, Jesus. He said, before the cock crows, you're going to deny me three times. And all this stuff was going on. So all these guys have got this crazy mess that's been happening. So they got the arrest, they got the trial, they got the scourging. And then they see Jesus crucified. 
He's beat beyond recognition. Beard pulled out, hair pulled out. His bones are exposed. Organs are exposed. A lot of things have been happening. So, 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 uh, what happened was at each place Jesus was at the arrest, the trial, the scourging, and the crucifixion. Each place produced scars on Jesus. Just think about yourself. Think about your life and think about where you've been and what you've gone through. And you can sit back and look and you can think about everywhere you went that you got hurt, it produced a scar. Whether it be physical like the ones I'm talking about, I got some physical scars. Guys like to get around and brag on their scars and talk about, oh, yeah, you took 10 stitches, I took 15. That guy goes, well, that's nothing. I sewed myself up. Another guy said, I didn't even sew it up. I just spit on it and held it together. I mean, just talk about our scars. But then there's other scars nobody wants to talk about. I'm in B5 and, and working through a 12-step program, a souped-up 12-step program. And, and, and just the other day, I was talking about relationship with parents and, and, and how was the relationship with your parents. And, and there's 12 guys in there. And as soon as they knew we were going to be talking about guys are always together with me. We're talking about the stuff we do on Tuesday night. They're all in there. They want to hear about the, the live now, live strong. When they found out I was going to talk about parents and their childhood, three of them laid in bed and wouldn't get up. As we're talking, another one got up and walked out. And I began to piece together a puzzle with them. And as I pieced together a puzzle, although they may have, have had different, different uh, uh, experiences growing up, the common denominator was, in all of them was either their parents had been drug addicts or, or their parents had been alcoholics or their parents had been abused to them. And, and, and for the first time, they'd been there for three weeks, and for the first time, they actually saw the commonness of their pain. Some just couldn't take it. They had to leave and sit over in there because there's two rooms uh, in this B5. They go over by their bunk and they just kind of sit around the back and listen, but they don't want to get involved. They don't want to talk. Then other guys, it took them it took them a good 30 minutes before they could start talking. And once they got talking, then they wouldn't be quiet. And I just asked them, I said, now what we got in common here? See, they had scars that they didn't want to reveal. There's also people that have scars and it would do some healing, but they always want to keep pulling the bandage up and showing everybody their scar. See what they did to me? Look at what they did to me. See what happened here? Look at this. Let me tell you something. Remember, every scar, every scar you've ever had, it tells a story. And if you let God do it, something special is going to happen. So here's Jesus. Every place he went, he got a scar. They saw his life in his body, taken down from the cross, they even helped. Some of them did. Not all of them. All of them. Other guys were running and hiding like the guys would be five the other day. That they were, they were hiding. But on the third day, they would discover something very powerful. So again, watch this. On y'all say third day. Y'all say it louder. I can't hear you. Third day. Third day. Amen. I got a little buzz up here. We can't figure it out, but that's okay. I want to hear y'all though. Amen. So watch this. They discovered that Jesus had risen. He had a glorified body. All things were new. The last time they saw him, he was beat full of pulp. He was unrecognizable. He couldn't even carry his own cross. He was so weak. He, he was put on that, on that cross. His feet, his hands, his back. Remember, on the back of the cross, they had a little, little piece of metal sticking up. Uh, uh, and so that was sticking in his back. He had all this stuff going on to him. He could not. The Bible says he was not even recognizable. But on the third day, all things were new, except for the scars. Wow. So you're here right now. If you would hold on and trust God, you'd find out that he's trying to do a new work in your life and trying to lift you up and trying to encourage you and trying to help you. He said, but God, I still have those scars. And he says, well, if you'll hold on and keep trusting me, I will take those scars and I will do something with them, not only to help you, but to help others. You see, why were the scars still there? Why? Because those scars had purpose. Those scars had, had power. And those scars had priority. 
Now we're going to talk about that right now. We're going to talk about each one of those. Y'all ready? And then, I'm going to, then we can go home. Or Burger King. We can beat the Baptist to McDonald's, whatever you want to do. Ready? Ready? The very first thing. Those scars actually produced purpose. Those scars helped produce purpose. You see, that indicated that it was truly Jesus. It was, look, there was his hands, there was his feet, there was his side. They saw that he had gone through something. It's in a joke, it isn't a dream, it isn't a game. He really went through death. You know, and, uh, and Thomas said, unless I see those scars, unless you show me the scars, y'all are telling me you've seen him, but even if he comes through that door, unless I see those scars, I'm not going to believe. And so when he did, he cried out, my Lord and my God. Now, now the same with us. We all have scars. We all have things that we don't like. There's things that happen to me all the way through from my childhood all the way up to right now that I wish had never happened. And there's things that goes on that I don't like. And it produces scars. But when people see the scars and see you still go, here's what happens. It shows that we've been through something, but it shows that God was with us. Amen? When we show our scars, when people see our scars, it shows that we have been through something, but God was with us because we're still here. We're still producing. We're still, God's got a purpose in our life. And so I thank God that my scars show that yes, yes, I was hurt. Yes, it was terrible. Yes, I hated it. But I thank God that through it all, he was still there. Amen. Somebody get happy now. Some of you got some scars. You got to understand that your scars have a purpose. Amen? Amen. So those are purpose. Scars also indicate the point of injury. There's power. It, you know, it, it tells me that, that, that it's a reminder of pain. You know, when those guys, we sit down and talk Friday, and I was trying to talk to those guys, and like I said, it was only like, uh, started out with, uh, I think, 10, there was 12, 13, then it was 10, then there was 9, and I couldn't get them to even talk. I said, y'all guys, we got to talk. We got to, we got to, we got to work on this. We got to, we got to find out some things that we all got in common here. And you know when they finally opened up? When I said, how many think I had the perfect childhood? Of course, hands went up. And so I started talking about some things I've been through. And I thought about some things I've been through and some things that misunderstandings and some hurts. And I started revealing the scars. It was like the floodgates opened. As soon as they realized that we've all got problems, we've all got things we go through. And so when I showed them my scars, a reminder of my pain, then the guy beside me started talking about hitting my product. I had to get him to be quiet for the rest of the talk. And they went all around the room and started talking about things in their childhood and things that had happened to them. And, 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 and what they were seeing was, you know what? I've been through something, but it didn't stop me. Your scar showed people that you've been through something. There's a point of injury. Yes, you've been hurt. But it also shows you that you're not going to give in, that it didn't stop you. I was so amazed Friday night, because Friday I hear all this while I'm at the detention center. And then Friday night when I'm preaching the last night of revival, this lady comes up who just lost her son. And, and, and she, you know what? You couldn't even tell her the way she was acting. She was rejoicing in the Lord and having her a good time in the Lord. And, and it, just, it just blew me away. And, and, I, and I'm telling you, scars show us and show others that God is with us and that the pain didn't stop us. How many can think about the time pain didn't stop you? You kept on going. You kept on moving. You kept on. You kept on. You kept on. You kept on. Amen. Amen. I, I remember. I remember just as good when when Beth looked over at me and I said, "Beth, that one well, last thing she said before she kind of went out of it, and then she kind of every now and then said something. The very last thing she said to me, but I said, Bethany, I was asking her about services and funerals and stuff, and I said, Beth, I hate to ask you this, but I got to. I want to follow your wishes to the T." And, and I said, who do you want to preach your funeral? And she looked me right dead in the eye. Last time she ever done that. 
whatsoever I did to I. And in that sweetest, kindest voice with tears in her eyes, she pointed to me. And she said, I want you to preach my funeral, Daddy. And it was already, I was already knowing I was going to do it because of the dream she had. But when she said that, and D.C. Daniel said, And for days, I could hear this in there and go, no, 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 Daddy, we're not put you through that. No, 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 no. I said, did you hear your sister? She said she wanted me. He said, he said, no, Daddy, why don't you just sit down with us? No, 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 no. You're going to be her daddy today, not her pastor. I said, well, I am her pastor. And I said, but Daddy, it hurts too much. I said, well, it would hurt more not to. You see, the pain was there, but it didn't stop us from still doing what we had. Amen? So now watch, watch, watch. In the case of point of injury, power. There you go. It's flying right off into the sunset. It also indicates a point of healing. Wherever there's a scar, it tells me you've been healed. Here's the priority. It never, God never takes your pain lightly. He's been there. My I love this. He's been there first, and he survived. Amen? He's been there first, and he survived. And he's been there for us. Amen? Because he's been there for us and he has survived. We can thrive because he arose and we can too. And for others, when they see us rise, it brings them hope. We just sang it. We just sang this song. I love it. Well, my father, we're going to do it right here. Let's sing, let's sing it together. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. So let me ask you a question. 
You've encouraged me today. You're encouraging you guys around you. He's the one leading them in, leading them in prayer and leading them in all kinds of things. I said, I said so, so why is it in the middle of all this you're angry when actually this makes you unique? And does it make you unique? It gives you more power than you've ever had in your entire life. Yes, you've lost power, but because of losing that power, God gave you more power than you've ever had. He said, you know, I didn't think about it. I said, I know you're still, I know you're mourning the loss of that hand. That's normal. It's grieving. It's a grieving process. I understand. But I want you to rejoice that God is allowing you to touch more people. You touch more people with one hand than you could ever touch with both hands. He said, I never thought about it that way. Thank you so much. I want everybody to think about that. What you've been through, what's hurting you, the scars that you have, the relationships that hurt you, the things that hurt you. Just remember, those scars are there for a purpose. And remember, here's the purpose. Look, it's there to show, first off, it was real. What you went through was real. And there's no way to deny it. It was there. It hurt. Yes, it hurt. But guess what? There's a purpose to it. There, there, there's power to it because that indicates where you were injured, but it also shows the point where you were healed. Wow. Every time I look at my hand, I see certain scars. I think, I'm going to go right back to it. I look at and I think, wow. I remember when I did that. That was crazy. I remember when I did that. That was stupid. I remember when I did that. I, you know, and then I sit back and think, you know what? God really must have a good sense of humor and a protecting power because I bet he laughed while he was trying to keep me from getting killed. You heard the famous last words of a redneck kids. Hey, y'all watch this. Okay. Scars. Somebody said, y'all look. Somebody said, my scars are there for a purpose. God's going to use them. He's already used them. And I thank him for it. In the name of Jesus. Now, now, now let's everybody stand. Come on up here, Jim. Play something for us. Isn't Jim doing good? Amen.
And then I explained to them that God, when He calls you from the from, from your mother's womb, He already put in the, all the plan, all the way to the other end. He put in that you were going to be a pit detention center. All that. And he's going to use that for the finished product. I said, because He did that, you haven't ruined your life. You haven't ruined God's plan. God's still going to use some of y'all in here right now, because of your scars, you're thinking God can't use you. And I'm here to tell you, you're more valuable than you've ever been because those scars, mental, emotional, physical, those scars place a very high value on you in God's eyes and in the kingdom. Not for us to do anything other than just nothing else, have empathy for somebody else and minister to them. Or to show them, hey, I went through it and God got me through it and I thank God for it. Amen. So, hold on. Trust God. It's going to be okay. And, come back Tuesday night. We're really getting into stuff with the, with the Live Now, Live Strong. It really is awesome. And, and uh, I'm expecting God to do something even greater Tuesday night. Uh, we're moving right along. We've been through silence. And, and so I've uh, been through hearing, and so now we're getting ready to do some other senses, and I won't get into it right now. I don't want you to, I don't want to give it away with some more senses. And, and mindfulness, getting in right now so God can talk to you. How, how many has been practicing stuff feel like you can hear from God better? You can see, you can sense Him. You can sense His presence better. Since we've been doing this, how many sense the depression kind of depression weakening? The anxiety going away. That's right. So listen, this stuff's good. It's good. And it's godly. And God's gonna take care of business. Did I tell y'all guys are looking good today? With the exception of a couple of you. If I can just miss us in prayer, please. My God, we thank you for your word that's gone forth today. We thank you for the trials and tribulations of life, the scars, Lord, that we're able to be expound upon them and help others through their circumstances, Lord. Lord, you are the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, Lord. Everything that happens in our lives happens for purpose. And Father, I thank you for it. Now just strengthen us each and every one, Lord, that we'd be able to help our brothers and sisters in Christ, Lord. And we'll be sure, Father, to give you the praise, the glory, and the honor for it all. In Jesus Christ's name we pray.